Whoa. Whoa. 457. That gives us about an hour, an hour and one minute creative constraint. <clears throat> I'm having a challenging time already. <clears throat> Something's happening. <clears throat> it's probably because I'm here with my brother, T Mango, and I'm going to turn that challenge into a conscious catching of a wave because the way I see it. Every, if everything is energy or if all things have energy to them, I think energy shows up in waves and I don't, and I, so that in a way that we're all surfing all the time and maybe that's why surfing is such a captivating activity and on that note, I don't think I've surfed more waves with anyone else in the world than my brother Timothy Eisenman here, also known as Team Mango Rob Raff by some of the Rob Ross, and I say that because on Earth, this recent Earth Day, the Rob Ross had a rebirth day, and Timothy and I have uh, somehow caught some waves, a swell together that is seemingly taking us in the direction of amplifying, reamplifying the Rob Ross message, and the res- we're re- maybe we're riding the waves of the resurrection. And that being said, Timothy, how do you feel about maybe opening you, uh, this up with a prayer? I wanted to ask you. I want to ask you if you would like to pray for uh, this creative constraint that we're calling the Breaking World Podcast. Yeah. Um, I was actually uh, praying in part of what you were, during that time that you were talking. And uh, that prayer that I want to say now out loud to you, um, for you to hear and anyone listening is this. Oh, man. Wow, God. You uh, have led me into such an interesting life, and I'm so grateful for the life that you've given to me. And uh, this is definitely a moment that I am grateful for, is to be sitting here with my brother, who, Lord only knows, has catalyzed so much contrasting feelings for me in my life. I've experienced extreme highs and extreme lows with Daniel. And I, and you know, and I know that I really care what Daniel thinks about me. But in this conversation, I pray and I trust and I believe and I'm excited and I thank you in advance for the Holy Spirit being the guide of this conversation to speak through me, to listen through me, in me, and out of me. And I know that's going to be happening for Daniel as well. So in Jesus' name, let's go. Amen. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> well, the let's start with this recent um, adventure we have known as the Rob Ross Rebirth Day on Earth Day, where we decided to shoot a Rob Ross video um again i know part of my intention of this podcast is to have a a walk up or a walk down rob ross memory lane and remember a future of the future the yellow the future yellow brick road that we might be embarking upon that i trust is an upward spiral um and what we did was we reshot the video of doing Banana Romaine because that was the first video that we did for the Rob Ross, wasn't it? The, I think so. I would be so curious if anyone wants to YouTube. I would almost, it's kind of, it brings up feelings for me to tell people to do this, but look up our first video on YouTube, Rob Ross Banana Romaine Smoothie. And Nathaniel was in that one too, Correct. Yeah, I'm. Sh- I imagine he was. All of a sudden, I'm wondering, was he? I think so. Okay, because Nathaniel's a whole nother. Maybe I'm. I'm excited to remember the future of getting Nathaniel on a podcast as well. <laughs> oh, oh hey. yo! So, what does this rebirth thing mean to you? Let's just go right deep. Like, um, Tim- Timothy and I have been in many deep waters. I've t- I think I've told the story about you and Maui, where they're probably one of the most physically, one of the most physically compromised situations in my life I and where it 
someone would have looked from the outside and be like, oh my gosh, is this, is this guy going to make it? Like, they might be like, is this guy going to make it? Probably one of my most physically compromised situations was in Maui, Hawaii, when Timothy kind of ca- uh, inspired me to go out in some waves that were definitely edgy, but it was mysterious. It wasn't certain. And I had a... Uh, uh, we did it. We did it. We went out. And those biggest waves I've probably ever seen. When this one set came out of nowhere. And so I'm like, oh my gosh. I was thinking that's by far the biggest wave I've ever seen. And it's crashing right on top of me. And the water is about to come. And I had this board that wasn't really meant to duck dive that deep, if I remember correctly. It's hard for me to remember that, was, that part. But it, what matters the most is right when that first wave hit, my board was just splintered in half. And I was disoriented. I was like, oh my gosh. Gosh, that was a big wave. And we're talking about a new fiberglass board that got broken half. Yeah, I was just gone. I would look back. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I got out of the water. I'm like, whoa. Like, so nervous. I think I was almost numb. So much, so nervous. I was almost numb. But I'm like, just so happy to be back. And then I'm like, oh, and my board is splintered in half, too. Okay. Um, and then, the, and I'm like, oh, and that was the first wave of the set. And then the next one came. <sighs> and then I come up and no longer that calm. I'm like, because I'm realizing there's too much foam in the water for me to breathe properly. Uh, all of a sudden it was a breathing situation because there, it wasn't like I, I could hold my breath underwater, which was scary enough. But when I came up for oxygen, the water was filled with foam. And I realized I would grab my board so I could get above the foam. But I realized my board was dangerous and sharp. And I realized we were getting swept towards these reefs. And I realized I think there's another set coming <laughs> and more sets coming. And I'm like, I, so that time I, I'm like, Timothy, I, before I undid my leash, I had a leash on with this broken board. I didn't know what I was going to do. I'm like, Timothy, and I rarely say the word need. Timothy, I need your help. I need your help. Uh, and I was probably borderline crying because I felt how, how, what a position I'm putting Timothy in. Because it was so dangerous. Timothy, uh, if, if, if someone was just watching Timothy, it was like, get that next wave and go straight to the shore right now. This is a very compromised situation. Um, but instead, he is, I could just see in his eyes, and he's like, yeah, I'm coming. You know, he's coming. He just came. Kind of, I cry. Here we go. I remember crying a lot when I got back from the beach from the situation. Um, he came just coming right towards me, no questions asked. So I released my leash. And I didn't know what I was going to do. I was kind of cut up. I was kind of gasping for air and gasping on foam. And then we got, I'm like, there was the wave. And I just like, I think both of us turned it up. And I just held on to his back like some sort of crazy rescue mission. And this wave swept us right to the shore. I mean, right to the shore of where it matters. We were all of a sudden in the safety zone. And when I got back to the beach, there was all, like, the main Hawaiian lifeguard that's probably been patrolling those beaches for f- maybe 15 years or more, um, were, like, they were watching us very closely, about to send out, thinking if it was, can they send out rescue or what they could do. And um, I, I could go on and on about that story, but Timothy was there, right there. And that, that I mean, that, I've told that story, I think. I'm not sure on the podcast, but I'm happy I got to share it. And I'm forever, forever grateful for you to, what I would say, to sacrifice your own safety to make sure that I'm surviving too. Yeah. Um, You know, a few things come up for me when I hear you talk about that story is... Um, I don't think I've ever really received how you say that to me the way that you mean it. I think I, when I, when I first, when I hear you tell that story, when I hear, I've heard you tell it a few times, I think I, a little inner critic that maybe I am letting go of is, would tell me like, he's kind of just trying to make you feel good. Like, like, like there's a little bit of a, that story that I've, I noticed me letting go of, uh, this time and just being like, Timothy, shut, like, like, just like saying, shut the F story up and listen to what he's saying and receive it. Because what he's saying is very, um, it's something that 
it means a lot. It's a, it's a meaningful story. And uh, another thing is, I think I've heard you talk about this, but looking back on it, I was probably some way trying to prove myself to you by wanting to go out in that, in that, in those waves, you know, like that maybe looking back on it, like maybe I've cared so much about what you think about me that I was wanting to prove myself to you in those waves. And the only way I could have you understand what I was capable of is by take like, like encouraging you to go out there with me. Yeah, this is, see, this is, this is a very, it sounds, it might be a breaking normal conversation for some, but I feel like this is, uh, I love talking about things like this with you, getting into the details of deep waves, because maybe we were both willing to go there. And it's like, it's challenging sometimes to find someone else that can communicate in such a clear way about these depths of details. And on that note, I'm hearing some sort of feedback. Yeah, there is something. There. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> All right. If you want to talk for a second or not, I'm going to go find out what that is real quick. Um, we can edit this out or whatever it is, but I'm going to see if I can get this done in like 30 seconds. Oh, if I want to talk on yeah, the yeah, podcast. Yeah, I'm like that. I'm just keeping this very breaking normal. Okay. Awesome. Wow. We had... we. <laughs> if we just edited the last five minutes out of the podcast... There was some sort of, I'm not sure if the, y'all can hear it or not. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear anything y'all have to say about the podcast, especially on the comment section of the iTunes Apple page. But it sounded like we were picking up on some sort of country music channel, potentially. And I thought I heard, like, live like you were dying, live like you're dying. And maybe that's a message from God. I do believe uh, synchronicity may be God's way of keeping itself anonymous. And that might be a fun topic. Um for us to explore Timothy. <laughs> and I, I, I'm thinking back on the Rob Ross. Mm -hmm. And and for anyone that doesn't know what, like say imagine someone doesn't know what the Rob Ross are. Let's start there. What are the Rob Ross real quick to you? If you got to give someone a, the breaking normal app answer to what are the Rob Ross? Um, the Rob Ross currently are uh, two brothers who have had crazy, uh, ex crazy and very uh, educational uh, experiences hosting people and facilitating people through overnight breakthrough experiences. Two brothers, and they 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 use this name Rob Ross as the name of their YouTube channel to. Um, videotape themselves do l being wild and free and goofy and basically every type of emotion that they possibly feel basically being transparent with that on video so much so that i would like i'm not i'm like i'm not sure if that's necessarily true i'm not sure if i've showed every emotion on video but that paradoxically makes what you're saying more true since i'm one of the rob ross so what about what were the Rob Bros when they first came out? And let's not not hear it from your perspective. What do you think like the the iconic <laughs> Rob Ross fan was like when we were when our Rob Ross flower was peaking in the raw vegan scene, like the initial hit on the marketplace of sorts? <laughs> I just I find that funny that you said not from my perspective. <laughs> or what did you say? Like imagine you're answering from the fans' perspective. From the fans' perspective. Yeah, yeah. like who are the Rob Ross? I mean, this was when they originally started back then, and whenever that was. Um, for some reason that set, that feels less exciting to me to me to talk about than what I how I currently perceive the Rob Ross. Um, but I will do it and. I would say uh, three fit brothers that are uh, raw vegan, or they were raw vegan, nobody really knows, but at one point there was association with raw veganism, but they didn't look like other raw vegans, and they didn't act like other raw vegans, and they didn't act like Christians, but I think that they might be Christians. Wow, wow, and how does that... 
uh, pertain to your life now or about like what is that what you are now or how would you how is that <laughs> um, <laughs> is that a description accurate for you or how would you respond to how would you respond to this person's description well uh, I think it would say the raw bras are uh, changing out loud I would say that the raw bras are a constant in a constant state of evolution and truth seeking, but they, and they document their experience. And right now it's two brothers. It's the, the third one is doing something different. It's Daniel and Timothy. They are, um, basically turning the camera on and doing, uh, yeah, just, just being wild and free together and call and and the only real consistency there is that they're calling sel- themselves the raw bras <laughs> and then for nathaniel um where where why do you think nathaniel's not a raw bra anymore he doesn't want to be he doesn't want to be there's been a lot of people uh that i've Heard it just and I want to say that question might be unfair. Maybe Nathaniel wants to be a raw bra, but clearly not by his actions, like in the business sense of it. Uh, maybe there is a part of Nathaniel that wants to be a raw bra, but that was thank you. I wanted to litter that back in as you keep exploring out loud. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, a lot of people just in conversation will say something like, "Call me a raw bra." Or they'll even call us the Raw Bras, and then they'll maybe shortly after be like, "Are y'all doing Raw Bras videos anymore? <laughs> like, what is the Raw Bras still uh, a thing?" And oftentimes, someone will answer before me. Like, I can remember Deanna, for instance, being a, a lot of times like the first one, like, "No, they're not doing anything anymore." And I'm like, "No, we are doing something. You know, the Raw Bras are very much alive." Um, even though we weren't necessarily posting content. Um, but that energy, the raw bras energy, which to me really represents like, let's do it. Kind of like, let's just, let's just, whatever it is, let's do it. And let's turn the camera on and let's upload it. And for like, uh, regardless of any insecurities that I may have of the video going up, like this latest one that we shot, I'll tell you the truth. Um, there was a lot, there was quite a few times where I, consider calling you and telling you to edit the first part of the video out. <laughs> but I didn't. Yeah, that that's definitely Rob Ross for me is, is has been a continuous growth hack for that reason. It's like it's such a reflection that if I care, like this is what I wanted to do in that moment. When I turned the camera on. That's what I wanted to do in the moment and when I turned the camera on and I believe it was in a loving way it might come off extremely strange to some people or like it's going to be easy to judge this one. <laughs> and am I willing to keep doing that every day and leaving it there? Mm. And <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a great it's it, it's it's a great description and I'm glad to hear you say that because that that helps me feel connected to you, more connected to you in that raw bras endeavor. Because I'm like, oh, yeah, we're kind of both on the same page there. It's like, yeah, let's just put this out there. And uh, am I willing to leave it there? It's almost like a, it's almost like a practice to be – this is like a breaking normal practice. This is, this is like what we do with the videos, uploading it and just keeping it out there with whatever behavior was on there. <laughs> it's like um, can I let go of what others think by just leaving this out there? Robras ruin your reputation so you can remember you can make a new one whenever you desire. She needed a hero, so that's what she became. Unknown. Man, um, that might be a good thing for us to. I would like to plant the seed of us talking a little bit of the new Robras thesis. The new Robras. What do you call it? ethos ethos the raw bras ethos tonight because and maybe you and i because i am definitely wanting so here we're we're kind of rebirthing or uh the raw bras but i, I am wanna, a male midwife currently and much more so if you if we're, i'm ready to uh, facilitate a rebirthing especially um, when your legs are spread like that see it's almost like you're about to <laughs> give a birth to an idea here and if that's what you're saying you want to use this as like a master harding idea mind 
I'm a, that's my, as you alluded to earlier, one of my goals in life is to live the best life possible um, and to accurately uh, report what happened for me and what's happening for me and to team up with other people that are willing to hold me accountable to doing that and vice versa. Do you have uh, renter's insurance? <laughs> I'm like, bro, I got, I got God assurance. If someone asked me that question, that might be my first response. If, if you're asking me that seriously, but it seemed like you were channeling someone that tried to put a roadblock into the Rob Ross massively succeeding. And it, it was just it was to remind <laughs> me, it was to remind me how there's, there's no way, there's no way. I say that too. I'm going to take a moment to celebrate because here we are remembering the future of the Rob Ross. I'm going to take that moment to celebrate that. It looks like we're about to put the payment down. It's funny you say the renter insurance and we're actually doing some, look what the heavens, special lease permit. Have mm. we never heard of this before? Because there's a legend, you know, we've been at properties. So as, if you guys don't know, I, know, I know we're casually communicating here, but Timothy and I have probably rented more epic properties at the best places in the world at the best time to be there to facilitate, tra facilitate transformational experiences for groups of people that have never met each other before, but where they leave, they feel more connected and seen than they ever had in their whole life. And so I've, I think we've both been studying the map and the seasons and how those correlate and realize that it's always changing, but there are patterns to predict. And so happens the next tribe design, tribe design 12, and hey guys, like I mentioned, the Trevor Holnaco Bear show that is going on at the Red Rocks Amphitheater. Timothy, have you ever been to a better place to see a concert than the Red Rocks Amphitheater? Because I know you've been to a lot of places. I am super hey, excited to go there. Let's, can you, what, what, you want, wait, wait, your little uh, microphone down there. Oh yeah. I am super excited to go there. But you've been there before. I, I mean, have, but we've been I, there together. I'm pretty certain. Yeah, but here's the here's the thing. I feel like when I went there, I was my attention was not dialed into that. I was like so in my head about something that I didn't get to experience that place. You did, you did. You got to experience it in that way though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm stoked. I, to go I feel back. like I'm supposed to break some sort of pattern in you, and um, because you're so powerful and charismatically and inspiringly communicating about the challenges you're facing, but that could be a seductive path. Like what about maybe it's more scary for you to fully own your gift with zero fear. Yeah. You, I feel like brought this up a few times, you know, like the other day we were at Barton Springs. I started talking about my tummy and, and when we were talking to that guy about coming to our uh, all-in immersive experience, <laughs> and you said something about that, and I I think that there's some great stuff for me to reflect upon about. Yeah, I have a hard time in my past for sure. Like I'm talking about not deeply in my past, like a minute ago in my past, of realizing that I am I am deaf. I have a lot of heroes in my life. But I am definitely um, my. I'm definitely a hero of my own, and I pre I'm really stoked of who I am. And sometimes I don't let that uh, be seen as brightly as I could. I'm I'm thinking that that's the way of unlocking your heroic abilities. Is first for anybody listening, including myself, to first honor the hero that I am, and then that other way people can recognize my heroic abilities but how can someone else recognize my heroic abilities if i'm not willing to recognize them myself it makes it a bit convoluted unnecessarily convoluted i'd say that's a good point i'm gonna definitely think about that last thing you just said about how can someone recognize my fight can't recognize them so this all being said Come on, you know you know the world pretty good. June 13th through the 16th, we got a property, this huge property with this amazing indoor suite options, one and a half miles of riverfront acreage, 
Breckenridge, Colorado. Most likely, it's going to be about an hour and 11 minutes from the concert. 12th Tribe Design. You've been to probably about five or six Tribe Designs. You've been to about, about 30 Rob Ross retreats. Mm -hmm. What do you think about our decisions on this event? And I want to, before Timothy explores this, um, I want to say that we, since we're about to, we just found this out before this, and I'm going to expedite the release of this podcast for people that really like are following this and supporting it, and they want to know what's up, and they're asking for more and more. Because once we pay for the property or put our deposit down, where the prices are going to go up. So we're offering an early bird incentive because people signed up. People signed up basically before knowing the location, like a family signed up. This other like awesome people are signing up without even knowing the location. So we told them that they would get a better deal because they supported us financially so we could actually pay for the place that has now landed at the front door. And you saw the photos. I'm curious what this all brings up for you. Like your experiences of retreats. Are you, how excited are you about experiencing this one? Why are why are you doing retreats and this type of stuff for a decade? And I think it's been a decade now for you as well. I'm pretty certain. And where did you get the? How? Yeah, I know. I I know. There's the Rob Ross affiliation, but what is it? I want to hear your personal like this the personal meaningfulness of these type of flow states for you. And why would you? suggest them to others just like someone would suggest vitamin c would you suggest this to someone this is a great great um in the spirit of learning and growing the lessons that i'm well one of the lessons i'm learning right now is i'm going to answer this in in the the most new version of timothy that you anybody has ever heard of or seen and I want to first say that these retreats, the international tribe designs that I have been part of have been great experiences. Like for me, yeah, they're definitely not only immersed within, but immersed around some of the best experiences of my life. So sometimes like, Basically, I've went to, I've done done these retreats and um, go on the next ones with people I've met from the last one. We get a place beforehand. We get a place afterhand. We go to the retreat experience together, and it's just, um, it's a, it's a, it's these experiences are ones that I am. I feel like when I, as I grow older in my life. I feel like, yeah, I'm really, really glad I not only went, but really tried on what, what was be what I felt like I was being encouraged to do at these retreats. Um, and with that said, the retreats are, I, when the retreats that I go to, Timothy Eisenman, some people know me as Daniel's brother, one of the Rob Ross. Some people just know me as Timothy. But me, I contribute so much value to these experiences that, yeah, I just, I feel like I contribute so much value. And I want to share that with other people. I want to share that with, I want to share myself with other people at these experiences. What, what the work that God does through me. Yeah. And I think that's how most people, they get the most out of these experiences show up at like, and it's a real, real celebration of something special. Yep. And that being said, I, I, it would be weird for me not to announce that. And that's why we are expediting this because especially if you want indoor options or better pricing, put your application in right now. But my imagination is this is going to be the, the best event. Like the, it might have the most, if I had to judge the amount of energy that's going about to go towards it, this could be potentially the biggest one. Mm -hmm. And I know you've been part of the biggest ones like Montana and Maui, especially financially were that, We've been part of so many experiences. What is, uh, especially around these Rob Browse retreats or tribe designs or whatever they are, what are some of the 
top three that come to mind without going into too much detail, just like the bullet mm. point of those experiences. Cause I'm definitely curious myself and what's most personal is most universal. So I'm going to take this opportunity to ask you. And I love how you hold me accountable to not to efficiency, which means like to me, honesty and precision. Um, Montana and Maui, those two right off the hand are the, the ones that played the most significant role. Montana, for me, it was um, love and adventure. Uh, yeah, realizing that I'm in love with Emerald. Um, adventure, realizing that I'm in love with freaking <laughs> going on epic hikes to to mountainous and pure locations like Glacier National Park. Um, and also I realized that I really enjoy cannabis too on those, on, on, or with those experiences. Uh, Maui for me, Rasta. for me, Maui was uh, money. It was, I don't, I can't remember exactly, but it, it just felt really good to not only receive payments uh single payments up to ten thousand dollars for that retreat but also to feel like there was uh way more than that um offered to those people and yeah um did you hear that the whistle what the whistle yeah did you do that whistle yeah what did you think that meant i was like i was like why did i just whistle what do you i was almost <laughs> wondering if you farted that whistle like you did some weird butt motion and all of a sudden i heard this whistle i'm like where the well, i was a little farted confused about that it too whistle. <laughs> farted that whistle come on well, who's gonna make a song around that i feel like that's like Tyson a, wagner's already doing it uh, yeah atlanta um atlanta song <laughs> That was two moments. It felt like, or was there? Was that three? I thought I was. In, give me something specific. Give me something juicy while you sip on that juicy double IPA. Something juicy. Yeah, you got that juicy double IPA, and then like that was two two uh, examples. I asked for three. Yeah, and you seem stoked to answer. So if I, these are all my projections. Obviously, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, the third one, I'll say that, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take it back to Kauai real quick. Kauai was, it was another time when you and I, before you and I had like just kind of taken a break from each other, being in each other's presence, I would say if I remember correctly. And I remember coming back to Kauai and I wasn't really part of um, constructing that tribe design um, yet. And I was more much more of just a guest. Um, but I still felt such a power in that experience for me. Um, really, I think that was the retreat where I realized that I not only I'm just, I feel like uh, I'm an amazing individual, but I knew that that's where I could, uh, I, I could share it with the world. I could start making a living. I could start making a, a, a lifestyle out of, around that gift. Nice. I'm happy I asked these questions. So we're at 5:35 here. Like this is about 20 more minutes. Is there anything that the, on your heart or mind that you definitely want to make sure we address with a little cushion to explore? Hmm. Um. Yeah. I mean, gosh. I, as I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, podcast. You have been a catalyst for, I would say, very high highs and low lows for me. And um, I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure. I haven't really dove too deep in that myself. But um, I definitely feel like I have cared about like what you think about my action, what I do, choices in my life to uh, – 
to an unhealthy level. And at the same time, as I say that, I'm realizing here I am sitting with you and um, a lot of those times that I'm basing that statement off of were some of the, what I would say, it was like like growing pains. Like you've really contributed to a lot of growth for me in my life, like massive amounts of growth. And yeah, here I am sitting with you. Um, I've come out to Austin, Texas, and you being a big reason that I'm here. Um, you just, I feel like it's not, uh, there's not necessarily anything specifically that I really want to do with you. I just think that I want to do stuff with you. Like, I just want to do stuff with you. Um, yeah. And I I think in this season of my life in this in this chapter if I had to say how this chapter doing stuff with you in this chapter may be uh different or upgraded from different chapters in the past that I feel like I understand I'm more centered within myself than I ever have been like I feel like I'm sitting in front of you not necessarily as your brother your your brother or younger brother um but more so just like as a as a friend, as a friend and a brother that is, uh, yeah, I don't want to, I'm, I'm tuned in, I'm tapped into what I want to do and what's exciting to me. And I feel like I'm ready to be honest with you and I'm ready to be honest with myself. And, um, I think we're going to have a really healthy and fruitful chapter of our lives, uh, coming up here. Yeah, that feels good to hear. I feel that for me as well. I bet some. I bet there's some sort of simultaneous. This, this is my imagination of our paths, how they converge and diverge. First of all, what you're expressing, I'm so happy. Like you're, you know how we we at our Rob Ross retreats, we would used to say instead of someone has a problem, a real problem with something, that they were an expert in it. So that you were an expert in jealousy. And I was an expert in uh, obsessing. And Nathaniel, what was Nathaniel an expert in? Do you remember? <laughs> I'm not even sure if we should go down that rabbit trail. We'll just keep that podcast uh, as a teaser in the future one day. Me and Nathaniel, seed planted. Yeah, and Nathaniel, if you're listening to this, brother, you're definitely an expert, I think, in multiple things, and I love you. Me too. Well said. Nathaniel's a juggernaut. <laughs> and much more. And a new dad. Um, what's up, Oakland? Um, I was going somewhere cool with all this. Do you remember? Uh, no. No. I think you were saying something about, uh, going, you were, you were feeling, uh, a concurrence, I think in expressing about, about the Rob Ross being, or me oh, yeah, being there yeah. Now I get it. Now I get it. Now I get it. Yeah. You, it felt like it, for you to break like all any residual tentacles of dissociativeness because of our close upbringing. I mean, it's a very strange, it's a very unique circumstance. I mean, you have the, I, you grew up the day one, I'm bigger and more capable than you. Because you're one day old and I'm three years old. And we are pretty much together so much from that perspective and onward. So I think it's like very important. That's maybe embedded in the hero's journey just as a me leaving my dad, our dad and our parents to figure this out. Like it's like our journey simultaneously happened to where I'm now a father to Davina. And you are now... Yes, you're my brother and maybe younger brother physically, but you're also your own person too. And I feel like we both figure that out that maybe in a, in a way how lonely reality is on one side of the coin and at the other side of the coin how connected it all is. And I feel like we've experienced that in very in our, our own ways and now we're coming back to um, 
team back up. <laughs> Max team back up. It's like, how was that for you? I got stories for days, but I'm excited to team back up. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think you said it about the two individuals coming together and, you know, what we both I, – I, what? Okay, here's a question for you. What – if you had to put a finger on a specific experience in our lives um, that you and I might have uh, experienced, was the, the one that um, helped us realize the most that we were two individuals and that we're two people living our own lives versus a brother, two brothers that are doing life together or – um, I think the times that we were like about to punch each other in the face. <laughs> Whoa, do you remember? Like, no, it was just like there was a few times in our lives when I both thought we were capable of punching each other in the face. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this guy like could hurt me. <laughs> like he's willing to hurt his hand to hurt my face mm. and vice versa. Like I'm, I might be willing to hurt my hand or hurt his face in like that moment. And I'm like, wow, if I, what if, what, oh, man, who's out for who? Mm, yeah, that yeah. was the first moment. That was the first, and that was probably much be, at an earlier age. Like I think I remember when there was times we got in a fight, and like you ran, like like I was probably doing things that were awfully, <laughs> awfully controversial. And then you would go out and say you were run out to the streets and call the police and stuff. And I was like, man, who's gonna call, call the <laughs> who's gonna call the police? I mean, like I might deserve it. I might deserve the police to be called on me at this point. But if he would do that, that that's pretty compromising. <laughs> Yeah, man, there you you. I would like to say that you. I have been more under the influence of the energy that I association associate with anger than anybody else in in the world. I mean, that you get that from me, or you that you experience that your own bird, like you get angry. Yeah, I yeah, I have gotten I've experienced anger. Anger has come up for me. Um and also and on the you know, on the opposite end, uh, a lot of a lot of happiness, a lot of joyful mo- a lot of fulfilling moments, I would say, like like where I feel very whole. Yeah. Um Yeah. Um uh, so nice. Well you wanna do some popcorn style questions? Sure. Sure. All right, I'll go first. <laughs> do you have uh do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Uh you can go first. I just did, but I'll go again. Is that okay with you? Uh, <laughs> yep, it's okay with me. Is it okay with you or do you want it to continue? <laughs> uh. <laughs> um at which point in at which point today did you feel like uh, most connected to uh, to me? <laughs> Probably like right when you asked it. It was like so close. <laughs> if not the same. What are you most excited about doing with me in the future? Um, Just like... Uh, it's a feeling that I'm excited to feel in your presence, which is just like a real yes. Like, yeah, like a, a celebratory, like good freaking job. And like shake your hand like that and be like, great. That was a great, awesome experience. Let's do some more. Um. Do you think that you're a more likable person than me? By some people, for sure. By some people, 
definitely not. <laughs> um, do you want to do that thing you were talking about, like celebrating, like good freaking job or whatever you were alluding to right now in this moment? Sure, as a practice of remembering the future, yes, sir. Or without that, and just to do it. Okay, all right, let me, I, I want to, yeah, just feel into that for a second. Yeah. Are we just, <laughs> I'm not sure who's asking what question now. You got the mouthpiece away from your mouth too, if you're wanting to say something. Um, are you willing to uh, hold off on the celebrate or finish the celebration later? No, <laughs> I'm celebrating now, <laughs> not <laughs> with or without you. <laughs> That's good. Okay, so my question. Okay, where do you think, what do you think is going to happen to you if you believe that your body is going to quote unquote die? I was going to ask you for an interpretation of that, but that just feels a little bit like a less interesting path to go down. Um, yeah. Um, I would think that my body would turn into soil type matter if I believed it was going to just die. <laughs> okay. And just, I, I don't know if this is cheating on our game or not, but I was asking more like I was, I separated you versus your body on purpose. So I was wondering about <laughs> you, but my question was more what, what's going to happen to you when your body dies. Oh, me when my body dies? Yeah. Because um, you said your body, and I just want to get clear on what you meant by that. I like how the popcorn question kind of took a shift here. True. We can we can honor the continuation of it. Yeah, sure. Um, and on that note, on that note, because out of honor of other things I have going on, um... Let's do two more minutes. No, three more minutes of this. Okay. And then we're going to call it a conclusion. And before we do that, to just end it off, we're going to end it right there. Is there anything else you want to say before we play this game? And we'll really popcorn the question. Oh, just end it? Yeah, because I am um, Oh, playing yeah, I would say that if you have any interest, and by you I mean it, when we were talking about the retreats earlier, uh, if it if that resonates with you, about joining us in Colorado, I t I would personally love to hear from you, and I'd love to have a conversation with you about go coming to that event. So, um, yeah, and I would like to give you a sample, actually, over the phone of potentially what you could experience at the event. Um, so hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, or just uh, when you send the email in, just tell them that you want to talk to me about the experience. Nice, nice. And... Uh yeah, thanks so much for being on the podcast too. By the way, I, I think it'll be fun to play. Like the because we have a, the Breaking Normal app. Once it gets back on the market, this will make more lot of sense. But we can really play it. We'll just go answer and then ask, answer and oh, ask. Oh, really play? Great. And um, I so appreciate you, Timothy, for being on here. I'm excited to have dinner with you after this call. I'm so freaking stoked by the the potentiality because it, this is a potential that I think it'll only be better than this, if anything. But like staying at that property, fishing, cooking the fish and eating it by a campfire at a private like retreat resort facility on 
under the Colorado night sky in Breckenridge, Colorado, with a bunch of amazing people. That we're gonna, for, that we're gonna really, no, that the people that we're gonna really enjoy. Yeah, and the, the what ideas are gonna be birthed from that, and uh, just to activate another dynamic, epic flow state, and then including this one, it's just fun to be with here with with Yeah. Yeah, I would say real quickly that the people that come to these events, it's not. I'm not guaranteeing that we're going to get along and we're going to have a great connection and friendship, partnership. But what I am is that I'm. Uh, I give it a pretty good go with people, and by go I mean I I show up pretty radically honest myself. <laughs> yeah, we had Doug, man. We, did you listen to Doug's podcast? No. I did a podcast with Doug and he was like talking about you. People listen to that one and they were like, if anyone, you check out the podcast I did with Doug and now we, but he was talking about you like you're some sort of like like after I talked to Timothy like that was like the a pivotal moment in the plot of his experiences that of before or after someone talks to Timothy. Um, and that being said, all right. So because that, yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. Three minutes and let's 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 show off our gifts. Uh, here I'll start. Here we go. What if someone like listens to this podcast and like, oh, they were just trying to sell that event the whole time? What would be your response? Join us. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, how, how many beers have you had tonight? This is my second one. And it's a juicy double IPA, 7.5%, 16 ounces. So to clarify. Is that what, how close or far off is my answer to that question that you asked me about the beers that you would have guessed? Oh, uh, about two, but I definitely noticed myself feeling appreciative that you clarified the ounce, ounces of the beer and the alcohol <laughs> percentage. That's like, I'm like, yeah, that's a cool, that, that's a cool guy. Cool guy. <laughs> I'm going to hang out with that guy. Um, When is the last time that you had intercourse with your wife? Not last night. <laughs> More than not the night before, but definitely the night before that. <laughs> um, when was the first time you had intercourse with your fiance? Probably about two months ago. Oh. Two minutes. What's a quality? in my personality that you would like to have uh, to to master more yourself There's either a lot you're trying to choose from or there's <laughs> you're trying to put our time finding oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna say probably the ability <laughs> to accept the low. What I judge to be a low. <laughs> what do all those facial expressions mean that's three minutes what's all coming up for you can you wrap it up in one minute if anything because that's good we hit three minute mark it's a freaking ridiculous uh, rainbow oh, outside right now oh, <laughs> 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 yeah we're gonna, have to, we're gonna can, go you, can you turn your camera on and we'll just leave this camera on my face can you just turn your I've never seen a rain I've been in this spot <laughs> yeah, we'll have to check that out. <laughs> but what comes up for me, probably wrapping it up, is realizing that I, 
uh, have many different friends, and you're a friend that I like to play with in a very unique way, and I really appreciate and enjoy the fun that not only I have with you, but the fun that I have around you. You catalyze a lot of fun around you, too. Bro, let's go downstairs. I'll can. Do you want to film Emerald in Indiana or not? Let's just go out and talk, take them to this rainbow right now in this celebration before I get my next call. Let I would like to because I could use it for the promotional material for the podcast. So do you want to do it on your camera? Do what? Let's take them out to the rainbow. I'm going to go downstairs in the podcast. Okay. On the, okay. And to be, and to, if we're, we'll just like get people to see this footage. All right. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. That sounds good. All right. Make sure you go to breakingyourworld.com slash podcast to see the footage of them seeing this freaking rainbow. Let's make a scene out of it, a Rob Ross scene in less than three minutes. Yep. That's my creative constraint. In less than three minutes. So you're going to keep that recording? I'm going to f- turn it off and flip it. Okay. Love you, Timothy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.